and head back to your seat. Sounds a little weird. It's kind of an adaptation of The Wizard of Oz. As a matter of fact, uh, during the second half of tonight's service, we will be watching the uh, conclusion of The Wizard of Oz. So did you guys enjoy that last week? Yeah! Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jackson did, but everybody else did. <laughs> All right, so last week, Brandon talked to us a lot about Dorothy and how her pursuit was kind of a friendship. And um, you know, we kind of learned who to be friends with, how to be friends with certain people, you know, and how to be a friend. Tonight, we're going to focus on the first person Dorothy meets. And does anybody remember who it was? Scarecrow. Yeah, there you go. Yes, the scarecrow was looking for brains. You know, the whole song. If I only had a brain. So tonight's message is called uh, "The Scarecrow: Foolishness to Wisdom." And we're going to learn how to go from making foolish decisions to making wise decisions. So we're going to make good decisions, is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to learn how to make good decisions. Um, tonight, most of tonight's message is actually coming from the book of Proverbs. That's the book of Wisdom. It was written by Solomon. He was David's son and one of Jesus' great, 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 great grandpas. So... He wrote this whole book about wisdom, and if I could give you guys a handbook on the Christian life, it would include Proverbs, it would include Romans, and Ephesians would be in there, and then the Sermon on the Mount. And that would be pretty much all you needed to know on a day-to-day -day basis of how to have a good Christian life. That's what I would put in there. So, TJ's picking on me, y'all, so if you see me smirk at him, just know he's being mean to me back there. Um, the first point on your outline tonight is, is kind of the theme of tonight's messages, or tonight's message, and that's that we make our decisions and our decisions make us. And you've kind of heard the expression, you are what you eat. You know, you've, you've kind of heard uh, the whole birds of a feather thing. Well, things that are similar tend to kind of come together. And, you know, we know that our actions give a react, give, give an equal or opposite reaction. We know that if we do something wrong, there's a consequence. So every decision that we make puts us in a situation to be defined by that decision. Now, we don't have to, you know, as Christians, we don't have to be defined by our, our screw-ups, our mistakes. We, we don't have to. But, you know, in life in general, your decisions make you just as much as you make your decisions. And, you know, speaking of decisions, I got a couple stories that, that I want to tell you guys about some people I know that made bad decisions, namely me. The first one, I was in the third grade. I don't even know, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys, I don't even know if Jessica's heard this story, so I'm just going to embarrass myself in front of my wife and everybody tonight. Um, I was in the third grade, and I was in the after school program at Wesley Lakes Elementary in McDonald's. And I was, this is going to tell you how old I am. It was the first year they built the school. So I was at Wesley Lakes, and I was in the third grade. And I'm in the after school program, because my parents had some job stuff they had to work out. And a fifth grader the size of a lineman that plays for the Cowboys. Right, now this fifth grader is just gargantuan, OK? He's like, I don't know who really was David and Goliath. And he was a bully. Now not in today's sense, where he tweeted something bad about me, and I cried about it for six weeks. Not that kind of bully. He was the kind of bully that would beat your face into the carpet every day. 
he would take your lunch, buy your lunch, give it back to you, take it, and eat it again. You know, he was, he was just a horrible, horrible, mean-spirited kid. And, you know, I hope wherever he is, he found Jesus, because Lord knows he needed it as a child. But this guy, he was huge, and I was like this big and this big around, and that's changed. But I was like this big and this big around in the third grade. And we played dodgeball every day. <laughs> we played dodgeball. Now, check it out. He didn't discriminate. He didn't discriminate. He picked on the girls, too. Like, he would get this close to a girl and hit her as hard as he could in the face with the dodgeball. I mean, the guy, he was like Satan incarnate, right? And you're not supposed to say that, so you shouldn't. But he was, I mean, he was just, he was just mean. And he kept picking on one of my friends every single day. So I decided one day, you know, I've been watching way too many TV shows that tell you you can be big and strong if you just want to be. So I decided to do something about it. Yeah, God was involved, I promise. He was watching. Um, I think everybody heard the noise that followed here in a minute. So I'm, I'm in the third grade. I walk up to this guy, and, like, the entire gymnasium just froze. It was like one of those Western showdowns, you know? Except everybody already knew who was going to win. It wasn't me. So I walked right up to him, and I hit him with everything I had, square in the mouth. You know what happened? Nothing. Nothing. I hit a wall. Like my hand, I did more damage to my hand than I did this guy's face. He didn't move. His feet were in the exact same place. But then something happened. <laughs> something painful happened, okay? He took his fist that was the size of this stage and put it in my face that at this time was this big. And you ever watch those old Looney Tunes, the old Looney Tunes cartoons where like Bugs Bunny or Daffy Duck gets hit so hard they do a backflip and then land on their face. You're not gonna believe me, but it happened. That can happen. You can defy gravity if you get hit hard. Enough. So I, you know, he, and this is something that was significant to me my entire childhood. He didn't remember it the next week. That's how many different kids he picked on in the day to day. I met him later in life, and he came up to me and introduced himself like he didn't have no clue who I was. So this this thing that was hugely significant to me. He didn't care about. It. You know, because to him, every day was foolishness. To me, I made that one foolish move. But it gets worse. I got up, and everybody was laughing. So I decided, well, I'm not going to get laughed at. I'm going to try it again. <laughs> we, we know what happened. The same exact thing happened again. I got hit again. So everybody saw me do two kung fu back flips in the gym, splat on my face. Would you say that I was wise that day? No. Okay, so we're going to learn how to do the opposite of what I did in the third grade tonight. So we're not going to get hit in the face by, you know, this big dude. We're going to kind of learn to make good decisions. Now I want to tell you a good decision that I made. This verse is not on your outline. And um, men, guys, boys, you're going to want to remember this for later in life. Women, you're going to appreciate this later in life. My, my current favorite Bible verse is Proverbs 18.22. Some of you guys may know it. If not, it's simple. It says, the man who finds a wife finds a treasure, and he receives favor from the Lord. Now, the wisest decision, and I'm not going to embarrass her, but the, everyone say hi to Jessica. This is my wife in the blue in the back. This week, we will be celebrating our eight-year anniversary. She is tolerating me. She gets a hand for that. Come on. And I gotta be honest. I don't get mushy very often, but when I read that, it, it's completely true. You know, she, she's a complete treasure. So the book of Proverbs, it really is a book of wisdom. You're gonna learn stuff. So tonight, we had a couple verses before we really get into everything, and that's uh, Proverbs 16:6 says, How much better to get wisdom than gold, to choose understanding rather than silver? Now, I'm going to give you a little context here. At the time, Solomon essentially, you know, we, we think of the president as the most powerful man on the planet, right? Because he's the president of the free world. Whether you like him or not, he's got more power and more nukes than anybody else. So all he, he's, you know, he gets a keyboard, he just blows the planet up. He can do that. But God forbid. But this wisdom, this, this, this gold and silver thing, you got to understand, everything at one point, there was no dollar, there was no debit card. Way back in these days, 
King Solomon had pretty much, if there was gold on the planet, he had it. If there was silver on the planet, he could get it. If what he didn't get, he could take. If it was at your house, he could just come to your house and take it. I mean, he was that powerful. That's how powerful the kings of Israel and Judah were. And these were God's people. So, I mean, he, hopefully he wouldn't take it. But he could if he wanted. He's, he's saying here that none of that mattered. None, nothing that he had stacked up in the bank. His plans, you know, a lot of us base plans around how much money we're going to have when we get that X point in our life. He's, he's saying here, it's so much better to have wisdom and understanding than to have silver or gold. The second verse, wisdom is supreme. Therefore, and when I hear supreme, I always think about the tacos, don't you guys? It, it says, I don't, tacos have nothing to do with this message. Um, but wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom, though it costs you all you have. Get understanding. Not though it costs you a little bit of what you have. That it costs you all you have. Get understanding. He's saying right there, you know, the, the verse that he wrote later, you know, the one that we just read. Better than silver and gold. Now he's saying everything that you have. He, he's wanting your t-shirt, your flip-flops, your toms. He wants it all. He's saying that your wisdom is greater than all of that. And the root of wisdom is searching God. Searching for God. Wanting to know about God. We're going to get into that a little bit later. As a matter of fact, I kind of want to get into... There's, we're wanting to go from foolishness to wisdom. So I'm, I'm not going to ruin the movie for you guys. A lot of you guys have already seen it. But it's, the scarecrow essentially goes from being dumb or being foolish to, to making good choices, making good decisions, and being wise. You know, it's, it's that simple. We're going to look at three ways that you can tell if you or somebody else is a fool. Three, three ways to distinguish foolishness. The first one. This is the South, so I'm going to have fun with this one. The first one says, fools act before they think. Y'all ever heard about say, hey, y'all watch this? Yeah. Nothing good comes after, hey, y'all watch this. Okay? Nothing good. Something good for YouTube comes after that, but not for the person that said it. If somebody always ends up in a body cast or... I got stories. We're not going to get into it. Oh. Proverbs 13, 16. Wise people think before they act. Fools don't. And they even brag about their foolishness. Have you ever been in one of your first periods of the day and somebody's bragging about something stupid that they did last night that they can hardly remember because they were hammered? Don't, don't name names. I'm just saying. Not only are they doing stupid stuff, they're bragging about how stupid they are. Do you get that? Is that, is, is that? is that cool? That's not cool at all. They brag about doing stupid stuff. The second thing, fools hurt those that they love. If people are constantly making poor decisions, they might think that it's only them that is hurting. If you're in here tonight, you're constantly making poor decisions. It's not just you that you're hurting. You're hurting the people that love you. You're hurting your parents, your friends, the rest of your family, you know. You, you might be hurting your future. I hope not. But it's possible. And that's, that's why we're going to go from those bad decisions to the good decisions. The third one tonight, I know we're moving kind of fast, and that's because those, those stories at the beginning kind of took up a lot of time. The third one says, fools think they know it all. Anybody in here know anybody like that? If you're sitting by them, don't elbow them. But anybody in here know anybody? They, they just know everything. You can't argue with anybody here. I am that person. I know nobody in here is like that. Nobody in here just assumes they know that. And, and I'll be honest, this is something that I'm actually guilty of myself sometimes. I'm a, I'll, I'll tell you. I don't like to lose an argument, if possible. I lose a lot of them, but I don't like them. So he says, I actually skipped the verse on the fools hurt those that they love, so I'm going to tell it to you. You don't have to flip back. But the wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears her down. You ever heard the expression, you know, you take one step forward and two steps back? You're never making progress. Oh, you know, you're never making progress. It's the same concept with, with the house, but you kind of visualize the house as your life. If, if every decision, if every good decision you make, you make a bad one, it's, it's like building a floor of your house and then tearing it down. You expect the house to get built, but nothing ever happens. The house never gets built. The verse for three is Proverbs 12, 15. It says, fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. 
And who in here's got a study partner for anything? Any kind of test or anything you work with somebody on? We got four people that prepare for tests. All right. <laughs> um, but um, oh, man. <laughs> you know. You got some friends, they give you good advice. You got, you got people in your life that care about you. They try to give you good advice. They try to influence you to change some of the things that you're doing that maybe you shouldn't be doing and everybody's telling you that you shouldn't be doing it, but you're the only one that thinks that you should, which means that you probably shouldn't. You know, ever been in one of those situations? I have, I was in one, you know, every five minutes for years. Constantly in situations where somebody's trying to help us and we just want to ignore it. So we'll go ahead and make the bad decision, because that's okay. We'll just go ahead and make the bad decision and say, well, oh, if it falls apart, I'll deal with it later. But we never get back to dealing with it, right? It just ends up staying there. And that's, that goes back to the point of night's message, which is we make our decisions, and our decisions make us. we got three more things, but these are actually good things. These are fun things. I, I really like these, and I hope you guys will too. We're going to look at three ways to get with, to avoid being foolish, you know, to not be a know-it-all that hurts other people and does stupid things before thinking about them. The first one, fear God. It's that simple. It, it sounds, now that sounds harsh, because when you hear, and, and up until, I mean, it, it's only been the last couple years I really understood what this means. Like, my whole childhood, when I heard fear God, I thought I was supposed to be scared. You know, I thought, you know, people used to say, I'll put the fear of God in you. That's what my dad used to say, and he did. But it was different. <laughs> It, it, it's not, if you, if you do a word study on the ancient text, they don't really talk about fearing God. They don't want you to be afraid of God. God's your father. You know, he created you just like he took time to create each blade of grass in your yard. You know, you're that important. He took time to make you. He loves you. You're not supposed to be fear of him. What it is, it's a reverence. You know, God is awesome. We should be in awe of him. And everything that he's done, has done, and will do. And he's going to keep doing it in our lives. So fear God. Proverbs 9.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Doesn't matter how many books you read. Well, actually, it doesn't matter how many books you read. I recommend you read a lot of books. But it doesn't matter how smart you think you're getting. You know what I mean? Dave Ramsey. You guys heard Dave Ramsey? He does the Total Money Makeover, Financial Peace, Brandon, Mr. Financial Peace University over here. Um, Dave Ramsey says, you're going to be the same person that you are right now, 10 years from now, except for the books you, except for the books you read and the relationships that you make, essentially the friends you make, the people you surround yourself with, the things that you read, the more culture, not, not necessarily just culture, but the more thinking that you bring into your life and the right people that you bring into your life. Which kind of works out in a minute, and we'll see that. But Proverbs 9.10, again, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One, which is God, you could, you could go with Jesus, see the one works there, is understanding. The second thing you have to do to give wisdom is ask God. You know, if you, if you want money to go to the movies, you ask your parents, right? If you want wisdom to make good decisions, because your way is not working, ask God, just pray. That's it. God, please help me make the right decision. You know, uh, God, I, this really isn't going to apply to me, you guys. Uh, but the older, the older guys and girls in here, you know, before you commit to, you know, uh, put that ring on your left finger, you know, especially for the girls, pray about it. You know, it should be something that you're already thinking about a lot. You know, and I'm not saying you got to stop. Like, if he says, will you marry me? You don't have to stop right there and say, hold on, i got to call Jesus. <laughs> now, that'll be a story for the grandkids, all right? But I'm not saying it. it should be something that you're already thinking about. The third thing. Actually, James 1.5. Let me get to that one. I keep skipping stuff. James 1.5 is the brother of Jesus, so he lived a life almost as close to pure wisdom and knowledge and love and understanding as you possibly can. And he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God. Who gives generously to all without fault, or without finding fault, and it will be given to them. All you have to do is ask. Ask Jesus. Ask God. Tell him, you know, I need some help. I can't understand why I keep making these decisions. I can't understand why I keep agreeing that doing this is okay when I know it's not. 
You know, I can't, I can't understand why I keep making these bad decisions that are causing more and more problems in my life. The third one, uh, this goes immediately back to what Brandon talked about last week, about the friendships. But there's also wisdom woven in to finding your friends, and that's hang out with the wise people. If everybody you hang out with is jumping off a bridge, you're probably hanging out with the wrong people. And I'm not talking about a real bridge. I'm talking about, let's say, let's say you're hanging out with like five other guys or girls, right? And all of them are sleeping around at school. Now, this is serious because, you know, this stuff does happen. But they're all fooling around, sleeping around with everybody at the school. And you're hanging out with that crowd. And I'm not saying that you're going to do it or you'll be tempted, but it's always there. It's that easy. It's real simple. You know, just like your decisions, the decisions that you make make you, the people that you're around help to build your character. And it's up to you to pick the right people to surround yourself with. You find that wisdom from asking God and by having a reverence for him. For him. The verse we got for that, and it's our last verse, is Proverbs 13, 20. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. You, know, you don't want to be hanging out with the group when everybody's jumping off the bridge. You know, and I know peer pressure's out there. It's a real thing. Everybody wants you to be a certain way, conform to a certain thing, but you don't have to. You can make good decisions. You can be wise. You know, and I got I got to give a little bit of credit to Sarah. I kind of stole the make good decisions thing from her. <laughs> if you know Sarah, you already know that. But you know, she said it, and, and it, it's just ringing in my ears. When, when I knew that I was putting together a message for you guys, because you know a lot of preparation goes into these, because we don't want to come up here and talk to you guys about some junk. We want we want to say things that that make sense and may make a difference in your life. You know, and making good decisions at the level at the middle school, at the high school level, the decisions you make now are going to affect your entire future. And I can promise there's not a parent in here now that that won't tell you that. And it's because they care. It's because I care. We all care. You've got to make good decisions, and you have to take the right steps to put yourself in a position to make good decisions. Because that's what wisdom is. Wisdom is doing the right thing, doing the wise thing, making good choices. you got two next steps there on your uh, connection card. And if you don't normally fill out a connection card, I want to tell you, these things are important. You know, they, they help us to be able to celebrate the big things in you guys' lives. You know, they help us keep up information, that's cool. But, you know, when you guys make big decisions, we want to be there to celebrate with you. That doesn't mean we're going to come to your house and beat on the door and embarrass you in front of your parents. Although that would be fun. But we're not going to do that, you know. We, we just want to celebrate you guys. We want to be praying for you guys. Because when you make those big decisions, it can get a little rough. And every little prayer can help. So make sure you're filling out your connection cards. Those things are important. The first thing on there is... If you came in here tonight, and especially if you're new, the first thing on there is, I ask Jesus into my heart tonight. And that's as simple as when we bow our heads in just a second to pray, it's as simple as saying, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I've done wrong. But I know you died to forgive me. You died where I could be reconciled to you. Because I couldn't do that on my own. My bad decisions put me in a situation as a human being, that I couldn't do it on my own, and I need you. You know, it's as simple as saying, Jesus, I want you to come and live in my heart and be the Lord of my life. And I want to be forgiven for my sins. It's that simple. You might think you're not a sinner, but everybody in here is a sinner. The second thing in here is, usually we take one baby step at a time. Tonight, I almost all to just dive in. And I do these steps for you guys. The second one is, you're going to do all three things that you need to get wisdom. You're going to fear God. You're going to pray to God. Ask God for help with your decisions. And you're going to do your best. Sometimes it's going to be hard, okay? You're going to do your best to hang out with wise people that also want to consciously make good decisions. If everybody around you is making bad decisions, they're probably not the people I'm talking about. That doesn't mean you love them any less. You can love them at a distance. Let's pray. Father, tonight, tonight I pray that everybody in here can start making the decisions 
to not only just to not only follow you, but to richly follow you in a bold way that you know that, that makes your name even more famous to the world than it already is. That glorifies you. And you know, and for, for I just want to thank you, Lord, for anybody here tonight that is asking you into their heart, because that's what it's all about. That's the most wise decision that we can ever make. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's worship together.